So this video is about five things to do and five things not to do when you're opening up your speciality dream cafe. So the reason we're making this video is because I keep getting a lot of calls. I'll get a lot of messages, a lot of DMs regarding the same topic that we're opening up a cafe. And there are certain same mistakes that I keep looking at. Uh, it's kind of a trend that I look at when uh, everybody's doing the same mistake. Point number one is the budget and actually timeline also. These two things are super important. Why the budget is important is because you cannot not have a budget. If you have a fixed budget, I think it just is a very good point to start off with or else you're just getting sucked into a big tunnel where there is uh, no end because you can set up your coffee bar right from like in four and a half lakh, five lakh till you can go up to like 75 lakh per se. If you just have your budget fixated and if you have a realistic expectation, I think that'll make anybody's life easier. Second is the timelines. You need to figure out your timelines because there are a lot of steps that you have to take care before you start your cafe, before you do the first sale at a cafe, like sourcing the machine, getting trained, finalizing on the roster, finalizing on the equipments, designing the space, all these, all these, all these things, you know, vendor finalization. So you need to have a timeline in your mindset. You cannot say ASAP. You cannot say uh, we're already one month late. You should have like a maybe 45, 60 day target. That's a realistic approach. Second thing, if you go to place finalized, uh, figure out how much sitting capacity is there. That is important because it is directly proportional to the machines and the equipment that you're going to buy. If you don't have a place that is finalized, try to figure out how many sitting capacity do you want to manage because sitting capacity will also tell you how much of overage do you want to burn in terms of salary, how many people you want to get employed in. So all these things come into place. Get a ballpark figure of how many sitting capacity, how many tables, uh, how many, how many square feet of space that you want. I am not at all saying that in a 100 square feet space, you can't do 1000 cups. Neither am I saying in a 1000 square feet space, you can do only 100 cups. I'm not saying that. But you need to start off from somewhere to have a ballpark base figure. Third point is deciding on the food that you will be serving. Is it going to be like a breakfast place? Is it going to be a brunch place? Is it going to be uh, dining plates? Is it going to be uh, just cookies and muffins and croissant and a uh, finger food? Or what is it going to be? That will also affect making a decision on building your coffee bar because let's say if I've got a lot of food my uh, coffee consumption would be kind of an average because customers and the guests have got a lot of things to decide on choose from but if you say that you're just going to do coffee and a manual bar and you've got just one cookie or a couple of cookies the amount of pressure on the coffee machines and uh, uh, the manual bar is going to be quite a lot the more important point that I want to make over here is sometimes you will forget that if your food is there your coffee consumption will go a little slower than expected, all right? So you've got more time actually on the coffee machine and manual bar. You'll get more time to dispense the beverages. Now is the decision making of which kind of equipments do you want to buy? If you open up now, once you just, if you're just entering into the coffee market, you want to start building your cafe, you'll see you'll get lost and confused in a lot of equipments that are available right now. You'll start thinking about espresso machine, the grinder, the filter bar system, the uh, water purification, the grooves and the grinds and blah, 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 all those things. Let's just keep it very, very simple. That's why I said on the first point that go for the budget. And at the same time, I would say refer to the video that we had made earlier, which was uh, setting up of the coffee bar. That will help you out a lot. After you've seen that video, come back to this point. Now that you've seen the video, <laughs> you'll definitely get confused with the amount of options that you've got. Do you want to build up a beautiful manual bar and think on those lines that manual bar will attract a lot of guests, a lot of customers, will uh, make you a little bit different? Or should I go for a very beautiful espresso machine which is like in, in the market right now? My entire point is I work in a certain way which is go for a purposeful reason. You should have a purpose behind buying this espresso machine and setting up a manual bar. If your purpose of the espresso bar is to serve out good coffee and uh, have a good decent look and of course if you've got the budget which is point number one, uh, it'll just make it easier for you to decide how much do you want to spend on the filter bar and vice versa. So fix on a fix it on a budget of how much do you want to spend on this. Keep it really small, maybe just three, four equipments, one set of coffee give it out in a very better way. Let guests tell you that, okay, this is good, this is bad, whatever, and then improvise on that. Do not go for an elaborated 
menu i've seen in a lot of uh, elaborated equipments i've seen a lot of cafes more cafes than i would have loved to you know the entire manual bar is designed in such a way that it's all elaborate and everything all fancy but now uh, if you go uh, the equipment is just somewhere in the back some other things have taken over maybe a sh shake or juice bar sort of a thing so i don't want that to happen it doesn't look good for your brand for the entire coffee community as well so i do understand that if it's a specialty cafe and you want to go good coffee if you want to do good coffee you want to have a manual bar setup let's just assume it's a compulsion let's just assume that but does not mean that you will just run through that spiral and go bonkers over it because once you see the equipments that are available in the market currently your decision making will be really confusing you will start wandering from this equipment to the other equipment to the other equipment and there there is no end to it be it the scale be it the grinder be it the equipment be it whatever so budget is super important do not uh, exceed the budget you'll always exceed by the way one point is there you'll always exceed by 25% you'll always always if you do that below like let's say if you got a budget of 20 lakh and if you uh, your your budget will increase go by go above 25% for sure if it doesn't i'm going to put my gp account down below uh, transfer that amount which we have saved to my account and be great so for the continuing on this point is that you got to decide on the espresso machine and a good grinder right now the point that i would really want to make is a lot of times espresso machine is given a bigger role to play whereas the grinder has been given a lesser role to play my approach is completely opposite the grinder makes or breaks your cafe is what i genuinely feel makes or breaks your cafe in terms of quality yes in terms of operations for sure so you need a grinder which is very good simple which will give you key, uh, which will keep giving you consistent coffee grind size so pick that grinder uh, if i want to make a decision i would go more on the grinder and spend less on the espresso machine if i've got a particular budget in mind so that is how i would go and then once the capital comes i mean the revenue starts flowing then i would probably go for another set of single group or buy a double group that is how i would go but i'll go for a good grinder uh, first thing that i want to do is Fifth point that you want to do while building up your dream specialty cafe is pick a good roaster, uh, a roaster which basically would provide you a consistent coffee and consistent house blend or a filter or a cold brew blend. Uh, that is very important. Pick a roaster who uh, would who understands what your need is, what kind of coffee do you want to express at your cafe. Uh, that is very 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 important for you to have. So you can go through the tasting sessions, you can go through the cupping sessions, and you can do a lot of jazz. So pick a roaster according to those decisions. Now let's talk about the things that you don't want to do while you're building your dream cafe. Do's are important but don't some more important than the do's. First is don't get too over ambitious or don't have your estimates be super high. Keep it grounded, keep it realistic, keep it very very practical. Don't go into a mode that I have seen this at a certain cafe. I have seen their story go big. I have seen this happen over there. Uh, everybody has got their own story to tell so i think stick to that don't get too over don't overburden yourself with the expectation that you're only building so you can literally keep it single group and a small machine or and some small equipments and then build it out that's your game to play but uh, don't don't uh, tie yourself out with uh, these kind of decisions and comparisons so basically how we started was uh, we just had a espresso grinder and a uh espresso machine of course that's about it uh did not have any crockery cutlery did not have any uh, nothing actually we had nothing only these two other things and milk also we used to buy from the kirana store uh, whenever we needed it there was a small small thermocol box in which we used to keep ice little bit of ice and milk we did not have the fridge also is what i'm trying to tell you but uh, i'm not saying everybody needs to go through that i'm just saying make the most of whatever you've got rather than looking at some so guests your guests would not really uh want to know if you have a fridge or not all right that's what i'm saying if you can manage the operations without that please go ahead if you cannot then you got to buy that uh just that don't think that uh buying few things which are really 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 not important and not fitting in your budget will stop you from growing that's not how it goes don't keep a lot of coffee options this don't keep a lot of coffee options in the sense not a beverages it will only burden you with a lot of things because coffee has got a shelf life it will start getting old it won't be tasting as good as it was earlier and could have been 
सर्व फ्रेश और ब्रूड फ्रेश सो डोंट हैव दैट ऑप्शन इट इज नॉट लाइक अ बियर इंडस्ट्री वेर आई एम प्रॉब्ली ओपनिंग अ बार एंड आई हैव गॉट वेरियस काइंड ऑफ बियर्स इट डजेंट वर्क लाइक दैट कॉफी यू कैन जस्ट कीप लाइक फ्यू ऑप्शन लाइक लिटली फ्यू ऑप्शन and then keep rotating that will be a better way you don't need to have a collective approach of like lot of roasters on your panel it's just going to be tiring you out you need to calibrate your grinder which you won't know what i'm saying if you don't if you haven't opened up a cafe but calibrating a grinder according to the espresso uh, according to a different coffee is another pain making recipe particular not one recipe is going to be great for all the coffees that will be brewing so all these things will keep coming up so you don't want to tire yourself out ultimately or else what will happen is you'll have Five, ten, twenty different coffees, each having different recipe. You got to mug up that recipe. You got to find the best. All those, all those things. So don't do that. Have a quarterly plan. Have a yearly plan. Half yearly plan. Do that way. Now, it's a very important message from the roasters community. Please don't negotiate on prices. Please do negotiate on the quality. By reducing fifteen rupees, twenty rupees on a kg of coffee. nobody is going to benefit nothing is going to improve it's not a life threatening or a life changing moment so it will be great if you just negotiate on the quality and not on the prices so much one good thing over here is a lot of cafes have stopped negotiating which is great we are also offering a different price uh, as compared to the retail for the wholesale and the uh, coffee partners cafe partners but in overall picture it hardly makes any different maybe a couple of bucks here and there that's about it so that's very very important so negotiate on the quality not on the price fourth point is that don't try to replicate something that you've seen somewhere and put it on your brand just put yourself inside the brand put your thoughts over there put whatever you've got coffee will always find a market uh and the market will always find coffee that's very important for you to know it's important that you don't just pick up an idea or pick up some lines or pick up some design and just bam copy paste it on your uh menu or your place everybody has seen a lot of things in coffee industry growing in the last 2 years people will find out people will get to know where you've taken this from if you're taken from this from somewhere please mention that it is not original we are inspired by that's cool another thing is don't try to replicate the story of somebody else you got your own story to tell as i said if somebody started off with just maybe one espresso grinder and espresso machine need not mean that you want to put the same recipe you don't you want to do the same things again and again if somebody has started with like 10 cafes you not go, don't want to open up with 10 cafes all right so have your own budgeted timelines your budget and finances and everything and then you work it out so that's how you should go on that All right this is a very important don't all right super super important don't you open up a cafe you're all fascinated excited for the guests to walk in and you know serve the best coffees and everything what you do wrong is you kind of bore them and bug them with all the intrinsic coffee knowledge that you've got gauge the guests if the guest is not really interested please don't continue you like continue giving them information about this is the extraction and this is the, that person has not even understood what a cappuccino latte is you have already skipped lines and gone to like extractions so try to understand and gauge the audience and the pitch that you want to give while you are interacting with guests if they are interested they will ask you question if they are not uh they'll just not ask you questions i guess you know but but just gauge your audience and don't give them it's a little repulsive little repulsive i'll the only example that i keep giving is let's say we are in a brewery uh, which i'm expecting you guys to take me some day the brewer came out and he starts telling me about the hops and different types of hops and that's cool that's pretty nice that's a good touch but after a point of time he starts talking about say the Uh, the tank is made out of and the water is filtration system and this is what I'm like dude I'm already high I don't want to know I just want to enjoy my beer you know that kind of approach also happens so not everybody will be as excited and interested in knowing the coffee so gauge your audience it is little repulsive you don't want that to happen you want it to give them space very very important so that was about it five do's and five don'ts probably we added a little bit more so keep it real keep it simple keep it just the way you wanted uh, and keep these pointers in mind the day you're opening up a cafe put on this video 
start looking at it probably or maybe a month before also it's going to be helpful i'm sure if you've got any questions put in the comment section below please do share like and subscribe we are inching towards thousand by the time we release this video probably we're reaching thousand subscribers it's a big milestone for us uh, thank you so much for liking all these videos and for all the comments that you've been giving we look forward to make more videos cheers keep drinking good coffee